uh, do should we announce uh, that Mr. Eithal isn't here now, or should we do it uh, after roll, after the public announcement? Um. Well, I mean, you kind of announced it now anyway. So yes. uh, <laughs> yeah, if, if you can just uh, we have the the, the conflict uh, board attorney. If uh, you can make yourself known, please available to make it this evening i'm in the same law firm and uh he asked that i cover the evening it's uh jeremy solomon thank you jeremy hey, thank my you pleasure. for having, for being with us tonight jeremy my pleasure gentlemen thank you all right uh mr dominguez can you please read the public announcement certainly please be advised that the notice requirements of the open public meeting act have been complied with and satisfied and that the annual notice which gave sufficient notice of the time place and conduct of all public meetings of the planning board of the city of new brunswick has been filed with the city clerk and has been placed on an appropriate bulletin board and posted in the back vestibule of City Hall, visible to the public through the windows in the lobby of City Hall, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to official newspaper for the city of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune and Star Ledger. Uh, the planning board, city planning board, intends to meet on a regular schedule and meet the guidelines of the Open Public Meeting Act by utilizing teleconferencing and video systems. Public participation at public meetings has been revised and the public may participate through a conference call system. The public is encouraged to call into the call in lines through the phone numbers and access codes transmitted in the above notice to the Home News Tribune and Star Ledger and posted in the back of the Yule City Hall visible to the public through the windows. During the public comment period, I will first read public comments issued to the board and those on call in line to have interest in addressing the board will be organized by last name and then called upon to speak. All organized members of the public will speak once and for no more than five minutes in any given public meeting portion. The timer will chime at the completion of each five minute period and I will notify you that your time has expired. Public meeting assistance accessing the call in number should call the planning department at 732-745 Five zero five zero. Great, thank you. If we can uh, now take a moment to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance. to the flag of the United America. States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty, justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Uh, moving on to section <clears throat> four, minutes of the board's February seventh, twenty twenty two meeting. Uh, uh, yes, go ahead. All right, Mr. Castaneda. Uh, yes, we have the February 7th minutes. Eligible voters are Matt Ferguson, Ivan Adorno, Diana Lopez, Anthony Camioni, Bob Cardica, and Manny Castaneda. Thank you. Any board member that can vote uh, for approval of minutes, are there any questions or concerns, comments before I ask for a motion? All right, hearing none, if I can get a motion to approve the minutes. This is Ivan. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Ivan. Can I get it? I'll second. This is Diana. All right. Okay. Matt Ferguson? Yes. Ivan Adorno? Yes. Diana Lopez? Yes. Anthony Camioni? Yes. Bob Cardica? Yes. Danny Castaneda? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to section five public hearings. We have uh, one uh, section 31 review, Wolfson uh, Park, Mr. Dominguez. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Castaneda. Uh, I actually am not going to be doing the, uh, the section 31 review. I've uh, handed it off to uh, one of my uh, staff members here who's uh, going to give this a whirl. So. Uh, Mr. Mora, are you on the line? I mean, I see you. There you are. Hey. All right. Um, thanks for being here, Mr. Mora. Mr. Mora is going to be giving the uh, the board the uh, the Section 31 review. Uh, I, I hope that he uh, that you received the uh, the quick packet that he put together uh, with uh, what he's going to run through. Um, with that said. Uh, Mr. Solomon, can you please uh, wear in my staff person for this uh, for their uh, task at hand? Sorry, I probably have to unmute myself, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Good evening, members of the board. Um, this board has been uh, referred by the governing body prior to them taking action necessitating the expenditures of public funds, incidental location, character, extent of such project, 
for a review recommendation in conjunction with the city's master plan and 2011 uh, master plan re-examination report for the construction of a public park at 150 Nielsen Street, Block A, Lot 1.01 of the tax map of the City of New Brunswick, pursuant to NJSA 40 colon 55D-31. So the site that we're talking about is a 1.189 acre, acre site and that is located to the southwest of the intersection of Bayard Street and Nielsen Street. It has 195 feet of frontage along Nielsen Street, 240 feet of, front, of frontage along Bayard Street, and 255 feet of frontage along Liberty Street. The site was the was formerly occupied as a four-story parking deck structure uh, known as the Wilson Parking Deck. It was demolished in March of, of 2017, and of which at that time the ownership was transferred from the parking authority of the city of New Brunswick to Middlesex County. Since then, the site has been and has been in the process of completing environmental remediation, of which um, uh, that is actually nearing, uh, I believe, the next, the last stages of that remediation. Uh, so at this time, the city, the city is preparing to enter to enter into a contract. Middlesex County for the development of the public park. Um, currently, there's no design strategy or site plan that has been prepared uh, for, for the site as the city is currently in the early stages of soliciting public input via community surveys. Um, so with that said, there's no timeline for such, for such a site plan, uh, design strategy or construction to begin at this time. Overall, the funding structure would uh, would be similar to other projects in the past, leveraging partnership with Middlesex County, um, and the city would be responsible for the construction of the park, of which ownership would most likely be transferred to the city thereafter. Um, so, in the past, this site has actually been the prior subject of of a study done by Edward J. Blasting School of Planning and Public Policy in the fall. Which incorporated a number of recommendations, including addressing pedestrian safety, improving wayfinding, as well as prioritizing sidewalk and crosswalk improvements. Some of some of which uh, uh, of these improvements have already been accomplished. Um, the report also recommended a number of conceptual ideas for the design of the park. Um, conceptual ideas included at the time event staging areas, a play area with playground, a dog run, a seating area, um, a water feature. And then and the, report, the report also identified uh, several physical, mental, and social, as well as environmental health benefits of incorporating a public park at this site. So in terms of land use, the site is, um, the site about several uh, new major developments that have gone up around the downtown. Um, as well as some very historic uh, sites of the city of New Brunswick, including the first, the first Reformed Church located to the north, the Verizon Corporate Office, um, as well as the United Methodist Church located to the west and Monument Square Park. And then some of the new developments that are around um, that I'm sure this board is very familiar with is the lofts at Nielsen Crossings, uh, the Brunswick, a 200-unit apartment, the Quincy, a 393-unit apartment, and the Highlands at Plaza Square, a uh, 417-unit apartment. So in terms of zoning, um, uh, the site is located in the C4 Downtown Commercial Office District. Um, it's also within the Downtown Redevelopment Plan Redevelopment Area. However, the, the standards of this will not apply because um, the site is exempt from the use standards of the local zoning ordinance that's pertaining to both the city's ordinance as well as the municipal land use law. Um, and then okay, the bulk of, um, of this report really comes out to master plan consistency. So in the 2004 master plan, this property was recommend, recommended for rehabilitation via the downtown Redevelopment District Renewal Area, and no changes were made in the 2011 reexamination report. Um, the 2004 master plan, however, also included a continued need for, to address additional 
expanded and improved parks and recreational facilities, um, as well and as well as incorporate a number of goals for itself within its parks, recreation, and open space plan, which included ensuring adequate parks and recreation facilities to meet the needs of the city's population and to make necessary improvements and modifications to meet those needs, uh, providing additional park lands and recreational facilities with the city's neighbor, neighborhoods and within the downtown area and maximizing accessibility to city parks and recreation facilities. The, the, the master plan further recommended adding additional park space in the denser areas of the city, as well as leveraging partnerships with other governmental agencies, such as Mississippi County, as well as seeking outside funding for developing such parks. Uh, with, that, uh, with that in mind, this, propo uh, this proposal is consistent with the goals and visions of the 2004 master plan. Um, we also add that it was the 1995 master plan that originally identified the short amount of park and recreational facilities based on a comparison, a comparison to federal and state standards. Um, however, the city has made a consistent effort to address this, this issue um, with a number of additional parks, Alice Jennings, Archibald Park, Wood Park, uh, Memorial Stadium improvements, Youth Sports Complex, and the uh, Bugle Park improvements. Um, so page four just shows uh, the location of the site, um, as well as uh, it, it was shared on the screen as well. So in terms of bulks, um, I noted prior to this that the site is located in the C4 downtown residential office district. I made the down payment. I made the hardwood source. I built the Sorry, of which the um, the minimum lot area is 40,000 square feet, where the current um, lot um, that, we're, that we're speaking about and is the subject of this application is 150 is 51,792 square feet. The minimum lot width is 150 feet and existing is 195 feet. Minimum lot depth required is 150 feet and the site has 240. So it meets all of the applicable standards of the C4 district. Um, in terms of parking, landscaping, and signage, none of these are applicable at this time as no site plan has been prepared. And lastly, uh, down to number nine, plan review comments. This proposed park will address several shortcomings in the city's open space inventory including providing a range of outdoor recreational opportunities for residents, increased access to open space in a downtown area where few opportunities currently exist, converting an, an existing vacant lot for the benefit of the public good and promoting several physical, mental, social, and environmental health benefits. Therefore, it is the opinion of this office that the proposal is justified as it is consistent with the 2004 master plan and the 2011 master plan exam report um, and um, and that it promotes the health safety and welfare of the city the downtown neighborhood and the general public therefore our office recommends act favorably in making its review and recommendation of the proposal to the governing body thank you for your time Uh, Mr. Sullivan, my understanding with a Section 31 review is that the board is the ability to uh, ask questions and make uh, suggestions, uh, but is there anything else that the board needs to do uh, at this time? You have it correct, Chairman. This is just a review, so there's no vote to approve or deny. Um, and it would also be appropriate after the board is done discussing it to also open it to the public. Any relevant comments will be transmitted to the council via the board secretary. Great, thank you much, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, that being said, are there any questions or comments from the board? This is Bob Crackle. Did, the, did the city entertain any other options for this property? Uh, Mr. Mora, uh, if I may, I, I, I don't know that Mr. Mora would, would know that, but as, uh, if I may, uh, Jeremy um, and Mr. Solomon, can, can you swear me in as the you know, planning director here? Because I, I may have to answer some of these questions. Sure. 
Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth? Yeah, the whole let me truth get Edgemont on the camera. All right, there we go. Yes, I do. <laughs> Very well. All right, uh, Mr. Kardica, uh, no, the, the city has not envisioned alternatives uh, for this site other than a park uh, for ever since the, the place, the, the parking deck was knocked down, perhaps even before that, I guess why they knocked it down. Uh, this place has been envisioned uh, as a, a park for downtown. So, uh, no, th this, was, this has been pretty much the only uh, contemplated path forward for the site. And, and as I understand, it, there's no vote on the part of the board to uh, proceed with this, or, or there is? Did I get that incorrect? Okay. That is correct. There is no vote to approve or deny. Simply your comments are transmitted to the council for their uh, for their review and action. I see. Okay. Any other board member with comments? Questions? All right, hearing none, uh, I'd like to open this up uh, for public comment and questions. Uh, I guess, uh, Mr. Dominguez, me then you may have to answer questions. Maybe if we can have Mr. Sullivan uh, do this part. I'm not sure what the board's usual procedure is. Um, typically, uh, a board or a council will have a vote to open the open to the public session, where people are free to make comments or, or ask questions. We don't necessarily have a vote. We just open up the public comment and questions, uh, but well. we do have. Uh, but we do at least provide the instruction as to uh, a lot of uh, time allotted. And uh, well, so, Mr. Dominguez, if, may, if may, may, I, may I provide instruction and then back out? Yes, yes absolutely. That's what I was going to. But I'm asking, I'm asking uh, Mr. Solomon. Certainly. Okay. So, uh, seeing as that, that there are not that many people on the call tonight, uh, we don't necessarily need to go alphabetically for a list here. Um, if you are muted you may need to press star six if you're on the telephone to unmute yourself or the little microphone button to unmute yourself on computer uh, we'll be taking uh, comments for up to five minutes per person for any interested person uh, who wishes to comment on the aforementioned uh, section 31 review anyone at all Last call. Seeing none, Chairman Castaneda, there, uh, there appears to be no members of the public who wish to comment on the section 31. Great, moving on then, we're going to section six, uh, master plan update solicitation of public input on the master plan update. All right, thank you, Mr. Castaneda. Uh, so tonight we have uh, with us the uh, lovely folks over from uh, CME, who have been working diligently on our uh, new master plan. Uh, they, uh, they're they here, uh, Mr. Ron Reinertsen uh, and Pat Van Burnham, at least, uh, that I know of. And uh, they will be going through and presenting a uh, relatively quick uh, PowerPoint slide deck of, uh, of, over, oh, eh, of the overview of the of this new master plan. Uh, so with that and your uh, consent, Chairman Castaneda, I would uh, I would take it away for uh, for Mr. Uh, Ron Reinertsen to uh, to take over. Oh, thank you. Please proceed, Mr. Okay. Good evening, folks. Ron Reinertsen from CME, and uh, Pat Van Burnham is here with me as one of the uh, team members who have been putting this master plan together for the city, on behalf of the city. Um, we also, uh, Chris Dockney and uh, Nathan Foote uh, uh, were really uh, my main four people doing it. Uh, all three uh, Rutgers graduates, true confession I'm not, don't hold it against me. But uh, we're looking forward to uh, presenting this tonight and uh, answering any questions you have. And uh, so let me just start sharing my screen and here we go. So can we see the deck? I can see the deck. I can. So, all right. So uh, the master plan 2022 for New Brunswick. Um, just a quick introduction. The purposes of the master plan 
is to uh, group here for future growth and development, a vision with goals and recommendations to guide land use planning to protect public health, protect public safety, promote the general welfare, and uh, it also reaffirms the legal basis for zoning decisions. Um, before going, and this is not in the deck, just so uh, under the municipal land use law, a municipality has to re-examine their reports every 10 years. Uh, the last re-exam was done, I believe, adopted in, in, in uh, 2012. Um, you don't have to do a master plan, but uh, a full master plan update, but that is what the uh, city has decided to do here. I just wanted to put that uh, out there. Uh, the elements in the master plan, we have two required elements, but we really have three de facto required elements. The first is a statement of objectives, principles, assumptions, policies, and standards. The other required element is a land use plan element. Now, 15 optional elements, and I say optional, um, uh, seven are included in this master plan, include a housing plan, a circulation plan, utility service plan, community facilities plan, education facilities plan and community facilities and education traditionally been combined here in New Brunswick so that we're continuing with that uh, tradition open space and recreation plan and a recycling plan now the housing plan is the de facto uh, required element because to have the power to zone you need a housing plan so just uh, just for clarification on what that de facto uh, what is additional components is relationships to other plans and finally, a strategic implementation plan is included within uh, this master plan. So with that, I think I'm just gonna go over the land use element and the housing element. I'm gonna turn it over to Pat after. He's been uh, doing a great, great work on the other uh, parts, of, uh, parts of the plan. Purposes of the land use element, which is really the meat and potatoes of the master plan. It's to provide long range policy guides for development it's the foundation to support the zoning ordinance. It sets forth the explanation and rationale for land use decisions and changes to the ordinance. And this is brand new as of last year. Provide a climate change vulnerability assessment. It's required during the master plan process as of 2021. This is a big change and uh, it will be for the benefit of the city and its citizens. Components include relationship of the land use elements, other elements, the relationship of the land use element to natural conditions, the climate change vulnerability assessment, again, brand new, analysis of existing land use uses and relationship to the current zoning, current land uses, the land use goals and recommendations for land use and zoning changes. Here's uh, one of the maps that has been produced uh, for the uh, master plan. And just so everybody knows all of the GIS data that is behind the, this mapping will be provided. It will be um, part, uh, be given to the city to use for their purposes. And uh, again, an, an, another benefit here uh, in this uh, master plan effort. So issues identified have been growing population, increase in industrial and commercial in, in development, short-term rentals, such as Airbnb, growing healthcare and educational uses, mitigation of climate change effects, existence of barriers to improve uh, to improving properties, and climate change risk, including flooding and higher uh, floodplains, severe weather events, hurricanes, tropical storms. Well, we just had Ida last year, which was a sobering reminder of uh, the vulnerability uh, that communities such as New Brunswick has. Highlights from the recommendations is rezonings for specific properties, updated permitted or conditional uses for certain zones. Oh, did I, I, if I lost my camera, it's fine. I'll just keep talking. Uh, update uh, permitted or conditional uses for the R5A, C401, HI, DHI, and I1 zones. Bulk regulations review to certain districts, R5A, R6, and C4. Consider short-term rental regulation ordinance and adopt a state model ordinance on electric vehicle stations. Considering my uh, camera failed, this is perfect uh, to turn it off. Pat, can you take it over from here? Yeah, sure thing, Ron. Uh, All right, thank, thank you, you everyone for uh, having me tonight uh, to speak to you on behalf of uh, what we've been working on with the master plan update. 
Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about the housing plan element next. Um, the purpose of the housing plan element was to address the housing supply throughout the city and pay particular attention to things such as uh, or populations such as, you know, the low income population and the moderate income population. Um, and then on the next slide there, Ron, we have the uh, components that we included as part of our analysis of the housing plan element. Um, the housing stock inventory for the city, uh, housing construction trends, uh, potential issues for the city's housing market, uh, current and projected demographics, and then recommendations based on those components that we uh, studied. Okay. And so here we have an example map that was in the housing element just of uh, vacant properties in the city. Um, we then identified several issues. Um, one of which being a need for new housing, uh, the limited land given the uh, built out nature of New Brunswick as a, as a historic city, uh, rental housing getting more expensive and the cost of that rising, um, missing middle housing uh, is disappearing, and also taking into account the large student population that uh, tends to find housing on an annual basis uh, off campus. Um, we made a series of recommendations pertaining to those issues, such as encouraging new housing development of all types, uh, encouraging redevelopment with infill housing uh, in places where it's possible in the city, uh, consider rent stabilization policies um, in addition to the current control, rent control ordinance, um, and then consider, publicly, consider using publicly owned properties for the construction of affordable housing. Uh, we then moved on to the circulation plan element. Uh, the circulation plan element is intended to uh, identify critical pieces of transportation infrastructure uh, for basically all modes of transit, whether it be cars, buses, trains, bicycles, pedestrians, other relevant forms of transportation that kind of vary between city to city. Um, and then assessing the current availability for parking in the city uh, also falls within the circulation plan element. Uh, the analysis that we conducted uh, was mapping in the analysis of the transportation infrastructure, uh, per paying particular attention to cars, buses, trains, bicycles, and pedestrian infrastructure. So like I said, there's some overlap with the purpose. Um, and then also an examination of the recent and ongoing projects uh, that have an impact on circulation, uh, whether they be improvements or just general changes to streetscapes. Uh, we then go on to a map of the street classification. Uh, this was a map that was produced as part of the 2004 master plan update, and it basically just classifies which, you know, streets uh, and streets throughout the city and how they function uh, within the city. Uh, some of the highlights of the recommendations as part of the circulation plan element were to confirm the city's current designation of the existing circulation network, such as the map that we had just saw, you know, making sure that everything that uh, we're calling an arterial or a collector is functioning as such. Uh, small improvements at specific sites, um, you know, things that have been ongoing issues and getting down to the sort of the points of where there could be issues. And then amending the parking uh, requirements in the city's zoning ordinance. We then moved on to the utility service plan element. Um, the purpose of a utility service plan element is to analyze the need for utilities throughout the city. Um, some examples of that are water supply, drainage and flood control, uh, sewerage and waste treatment, solid waste disposal and other utilities that are related. Um, and then also to identify future general location of any uh, utility facilities. Uh, as part of the utility service plan element, uh, there was actually recently two master plans that were produced um, that were uh, very relevant to this portion of this master plan update, the 2020 uh, sanitary sewer master plan and the uh, 2020 water master plan, both of which were produced by Mount McDonald, um, referencing that as it pertains to wastewater management, stormwater, water supply, and then also um, looking at the current gas and electric as well as telecommunications and cable in the city. Um, here we have a map that was produced looking at future developments in the city that pertain to uh, the water supply specifically, um, five-year developments and 10-year developments, and then within that um, master plan element, looking at how those new developments would impact the need for water. Um, moving on to the recommendations that we made as part of this plan element, um, infrastructure improvements and maintenance, um, that's a pretty general thing as part of the master planning process, You know, making sure that everything is up to speed and maintained well, um, updating management systems that are within the city, 
and as well as establishing an inflow and infiltration plan. You'll sometimes call that, you'll see that called an I and I plan, um, but that is uh, part of the recommendations. Um, moving on, as Ron said, uh, the community and educational facilities plan element traditionally is combined in the city um, due to the close ties to uh, educational facilities throughout um, and how they function within the community. Um, so the purpose of the community and facilities, community and educational facilities plan element was to identify existing and proposed community facilities, uh, you know, what they are, where they are, and how they relate to the surrounding area. Um, the surrounding area meaning both surrounding those cities or surrounding those facilities as well as how they relate to surrounding the city itself. Um, and then also looking at the educational facilities um, within the city, looking at the public schools, the private uh, parochial schools, and um, incorporate purposes and goals from the long range facilities plan as part of that. Um, as part of the analysis for the community of educational facilities plan element, um, we identified the schools, um, including higher education, uh, religious institutions, arts and entertainment, historic sites and properties, um, libraries, hospitals, fire, serv fire department services, police department services, and then other city services that are um, very important and where and and their functionality within the city. Um, here we have uh, a map identifying some of the uh, other community facilities. You know things that are just general resources to residents that um, are called out as part of that master plan element update. Um, and then we look at the recommendations for this uh, element specifically. Uh, two main ones were to continue to monitor and improve existing community facilities and also to um, look at the shared services between the city and neighboring municipalities and other entities um, such as the school board and trying to bolster those those shared services. Um, and the next element that we moved on to was the open space and recreation plan. We got a little bit of a taste of this earlier with uh, Mr. Moore's presentation. Um, the purpose of the open space and recreation plan element is to show a comprehensive system of areas and public sites for recommendation in the city. Um, and identifying these as part of the Recreation Open Space Inventory, or ROSI, um, and then provide recommendations for enhancing the existing park system that is within the city itself. Um, as part of the analysis that we performed for the Recreation Open Space uh, element, uh, the total number of parks and open space areas in the city were identified, um, as well as looking at uh, who owns and maintains these. Um, and here we see the the two county owned, including the Wolfson Park. Um, another part of the uh, open space element that we addressed was looking at the city's municipal public access plan. Um, it was adopted fairly recently in 2019, um, and it's being incorporated directly as uh, part of the open space and recreation plan element. Um, the recommendations in there are, are relevant and uh, certainly pertinent to the master planning process. Um, and then modifications were made to the uh, municipal public municipal public access plan, where the circumstances warranted. Well, just so I, certain uh, information that we updated, like you know the the the, M, uh, the public access plan referenced the 2004 plan, obviously being part of this standalone plan, we would just you know change certain references. But basically, what is being incorporated in in this plan is a fine document that was produced and is part of the existing master plan and was adopted just recently. And then uh, here we have just an example of the uh, one of the maps as part of this master plan element. It's um, the ROSI, the Recreation Open Space Inventory and the properties that are identified on that um, and where they are in the city. Um, recommendations that we made as part of this master plan element were um, you know, improvements and maintenance to existing parks uh, within the city, expanding the city's park system, you know, through a targeted approach, similar to what we saw earlier today, uh, coordinate with community stakeholders uh, in order to adequately identify the needs for facilities, and then um, also to identify and reconcile any discrepancies in the recreation and open space inventory list that Green Acres has for the city. The next uh, plan element that we looked at was the recycling plan element. Uh, the purpose for a recycling plan element is to accommodate efficient and effective methods of recycling and also trash collection. Um, it's to identify existing refuse and recycling requirements. Whoa. Did you did you have a problem there, Pat? 
No, my uh, my my Amazon device must have thought I said her name. Uh, oh, okay. Um, okay. And then recommendations for ordinances and policies um, as it pertains to recycling and refuse in the city. Modern technology. Oh, that it got me. <laughs> um, here we have one of the maps that we find. Um, this is just the recycling schedule within the city. Um, looking at you know where recycling is being collected and when um, and what those zones are. And the recommendations that we made as part of um, the recycling plan element were to review the uh, recycling ordinance that is within the city, um, bolster the enforcement and education as well um, about recycling and uh, more sustainable practices for uh, trash disposal, and establish partnerships with community stakeholders for recycling education. So sort of, uh, you know, points two and three are tied to one another. Um, Ron, do you want to take the relationship to other plans? Or would you sure, like to sure. So relations, uh, relationships to other plans, I'll just uh, finish this up here. Pat, great job. Uh, the relationship to other plans is a traditional element. Uh, the purpose is to provide a statement indicating the relationship of the proposed development to master plans and contiguous municipalities, those surrounding the city. The county master plan, which actually is going on a, on a uh, is being updated as we speak. I think they call it, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it has the number 2040 in the year uh, to it. Uh, they just released a open space element last year as a draft. State development and redevelopment plan and district solid waste management plan. Here's the map of the relationship to other plans. Uh, as you can see in purple are all the surrounding municipalities. Um, so very briefly, findings is the master plan is compatible with surrounding municipalities in um, within Middlesex, East Brunswick, Edison, Highland Park, North Brunswick, Piscataway, and Franklin in Somerset County. The plan is also consistent with county, state, and district plans. And to wrap it up, uh, a traditional element from the 2004 plan, and just let me say the 2004 plan, fine document, and so is the 2011 uh, master plan re-exam. Um, these were great foundations to build upon. Uh, the strategic implementation plan is the final section of the New Brunswick Master Plan. It provides the action implementation plan for the master plan, in which contains the following. Recommendations from each master plan element. And it, whoops, I almost skipped over that. Uh, and provides, provides implementation strategy for recommendations. This is what happens when your camera goes. So to wrap it up, in any language that you can think of. Thank you for having us today. And uh, with that, we conclude our presentation and I will stop sharing my screen. Great, thank you gentlemen for your presentation. Um, Mr. Sullivan, again, I, I, my understanding is that this is the only uh, course of action for us as a planning board at this point in time is to provide input or ask questions regarding the, uh, the update, correct? That is correct, it's simply an update. Um, there's no vote at this time. There will be a presentation of the proposed master plan when it's completed, at which time the planning board will be have a chance to weigh in as well as the public. And of course, that means that there is no need for a public session at this point at, on this subject either. Great. Uh, Mr. Solomon uh, and Chairman Castaneda, the, the, there is an intent here uh, that we do. We may not have to, but there is an intent here that we do open it to the public for the public's input. Yeah, there's, there's uh, certainly no harm in doing so. Okay, just wanted to clarify that it is the city's hope and intent that we would have members of the public <clears throat> comment on and give input. That's all. That's that's good because that would be my my recommendation as well. So moving forward, at this point in time, are there any board members that have any questions or comments regarding the update? I have a question concerning the the housing element in particular. I know that you you mentioned. Um, Several issues involving housing. You mentioned short term rentals, uh, issues with the city's housing market, the missing middle, as you called it. The donut. Um, the donut. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever that means. But could you further explain kind of, um, you know, what the what the critical issue, what you consider the critical issues that will be dealt with in the master plan? Well, I think one of the critical issues, and we, 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 this has been an ongoing issue um, with the city, is the pressure um, uh, for available housing and trying to balance it with the uh, student housing. 
Um, and this has been stakeholders have identified it. Um, you know, we can, and, and, and I, I would say the missing middle is really that a lot of attention on, on, on redevelopment plans and other plans is on, on, on a more higher income. And then, of course, because of fair housing and such that in the rent controls, we have the low, uh, uh, low income uh, address. But really what's missing is that middle, that middle class housing, you know, and, and it almost is, you know, you're almost ex excluding uh, certain things. So I think that that would be a main focus uh, of, um, you know, of the housing element that uh, once you get to see it, you'll, you'll, you'll understand it. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be any great mystery if you've seen the 2004 plan and the 2011 uh, uh, re-exam. These are ongoing challenges in the city. And, uh, you know, it's just a continuity with the, with the prior plans. Does the, does the plan intend to sort of address the issue of rentals versus ownership uh, in the city? Is that, um, is that something which is considered a critical issue to address in the master plan? Uh, I, I, would, I, would, I would say that I think a lot of the recommendations when it comes to short-term rentals would de definitely be in that ballpark. Uh, you know, any any time that you take out um, supply um, and you have demand, you put a squeeze on affordability. So those things have to be addressed. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have to look at short term, -term rentals. The Airbnb and other markets may uh, be able to uh, address certain items that uh, haven't been contemplated before. So it's that's why you know it's 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 being. There will be recommendations, and again, since since the text is not here for you, uh, you know, I would say our draft is done. Um, you know, for me to 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 start talking specifics may be a little inappropriate, but I think that's really the the focus here. We want to be able to make New Brunswick affordable, well balanced, inclusive city. And just one other request. Well, I was going to say, I... Pat, did you have anything to add to that one? No, you covered that really well. Yeah, you you covered pretty much every point I had. So, okay. Just one request that I have is that you know when when a draft is produced, I hope that the planning board gets a considerable amount of time to study it um, and and develop comments on it. It's not a rush thing. Yeah, we'll defer to Mr. Dominguez and his great staff there, uh, but that's our intent. Um, like I said, it's, uh, and if just to, to let you know, if you want to know specifics, everything is done and all, you know, in, in its draft form, when I talk about draft form in a word form, um, in a production state, I think that the, uh, we have one element that needs to be produced. It's going to be, and I me mentioned before, I complimented the prior plan, the 2004 plan. I think when you look at it though, you're going to realize how much technology has changed since then. And that, you know, just on a visual, uh, visual, um, even if you look at the difference between the 2004 and 2011 plan, the production value, that's not a criticism of, of, of who produced the plan. That was just the limitations of technology now. So when you get a plan, this is going to be not only uh, updated, it's going to be robust. It's going to be, uh, you know, uh, it's really going to um, uh be a nice document to uh, represent the city going forward from 2022 on. And we certainly hope to get input from you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Any more comments or questions from the board? All right, hearing none. Uh, Mr. Dominguez, if I can ask you to open it up for public comment on this on the update. Mr. Dominguez, you're there. Sorry. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, again, seeing as that there are not that many people on the call tonight, um, once again, um, if anyone is interested in commenting here on the presentation we just saw, um, please state your name. We'll put you on the list of speakers. You'll get five minutes to to comment. And um, and yeah, if you're on the phone, you'll need to dial star six to unmute yourself. Otherwise, you'll have to press the uh, little microphone button to unmute yourself if you're on computer. So is there anyone out there who uh, wishes to uh, have a few minutes to comment? Linda Starr? Yes, Char Charlie Cradiville. Glenn Patterson. 
All right. Hold on. <clears throat> do, 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 do. All right. I got Charlie Pradeville, Linda Stork, Glenn Patterson. Uh, is there anyone else uh, from the public who wishes to uh, comment tonight? Last call. Seeing no others. Um, Chairman Castaneda going alphabetically here. Um, first up is Mr. Charlie Craddeville. Mr. Craddeville, if you give me a second to set up my timer. Are you ready? Yes, sir. The floor is yours, Mr. Craddeville. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I must say I'm shocked at how poor the public engagement has been for these input sessions, and I want to uh, call on the planning department and uh, CME to schedule an additional hybrid virtual and in-person meeting. I think that, you know, by my count so far, three people, including myself, have given comments, and there are three people, including myself, signed up to give comments today, and it's my understanding this is the last public input session. Five people out of a city of more than 50,000 uh, it's really not good public input, and I think if it had been promoted better, it uh, would have had more uh, people coming. Uh, I mean, there, were, there was more input on the Wolfson Park uh, uh, through that public process, which, by the way, did include in-person meeting or two, uh, and still one more scheduled. And, uh, yeah, I just don't see why, why uh, we can't have a, a hybrid meeting now. I think that, you know, doing so would be wise and, you know, uh, hope that you'll consider that seriously um, so that we can get more input. But I am looking forward to hearing from other people, so I'll just make a few points about the plan. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, uh, the, obviously the powers that be want to do something about short-term rentals, um, but that's really a, a market that's competing with hotels. I think what Mr. Kartika's good question was getting to was the rental market. Um, I believe it's 81 percent of folks here in New Brunswick are renters. Uh, does anybody know of any other city in New Jersey that has a greater uh, percentage of renters? I, I don't know of one, um, but I'd like to hear if you know of one. And, uh, you know, given that, uh, that case, I think that should be front and center in your, in your housing plan. Um, I'm also curious how you're going to be amending the parking requirements in the zoning ordinance. Uh, the devil's in the details there, and I'd like to know more uh, for that circulation plan. Um, community facilities, we desperately need spaces to hold public meetings. Uh, you know, obviously City Hall has been closed for the past two years, um, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's actually really hard to just find a place to have a community meeting, um, and I, don't, I didn't see any community centers listed on the facilities plan. The closest thing we have is Unity Square, uh, which is quite small. Um, I think that, you know, um, if we are looking big picture at what, what the community truly needs, it is um, you know, quality uh, facilities that provide spaces for people to come together, for people to rent out affordably or, or to, to use to host events. Um, I think that, that, that that's sorely needed here, um, not just for arts and entertainment or politics and government, but just for basic uh, human interaction. And, and you know, the city used to have a lot more spaces for that. Um, many have been pushed out. Uh, I caution you about the long-range facilities plan that the district of uh, the school districts come up with. Um, I know that it was hastily adopted to force the closure of the Lincoln Annex School and uh, shifting those children into a temporary warehouse uh, converted into an educational facility in the industrial part of town and. Um, you know, I think that was obviously wrong, but it, their solutions are also obviously wrong. They want to build a mega school on Jersey Avenue, pack 1,100 kids into it, and that's not good policy. Uh, we should have a, a, a moderate-sized school in every neighborhood, not just pack the kids into one single facility to uh, facilitate gentrification schemes. And so I hope that you'll uh, take a critical eye when you look at that long-range facilities plan. And, uh, yeah, I think those are my, my points I wanted to make, and I hope that you'll reopen the process and continue to have public hearings uh, to allow input. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Cuervo. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, next up uh, is uh, an OPQRS. Yep, definitely. Is uh, Mr. Uh, Glenn Patterson. Mr. Patterson, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Mr. Patterson, okay. your five minutes are up, are beginning. You may start. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was interested to hear about the um, land use uh, climate change vulnerability assessment, and I was curious if any particular issues, I know you mentioned flooding, um, were there any particular issues or particular locations that you identified as uh, being vulnerable in the city? It's all yours, Pat. Thanks, Ron. I was wondering if you were going to have me take that or not. Um, yes, so as part of the climate change vulnerability assessment, we did look at um, specific uh, locations that do fall within hazard areas, such as the floodplains, and then also looking at examples of, um, you know, what what was really identified as vulnerable um, in recent history, um, looking at things like Ida um, and Sandy, looking at what, um, you know, was really severely impacted by that. Um, but yes, so we did look at specific uh, sites and facilities that are at greater risk based on their location as it relates to climate change hazards. Yeah, you'll be interested in reading uh, what the specifics are uh, with that. And New Brunswick has done a good job in not developing the immediate waterfront. So when you do have those events, uh, the flooding doesn't impact the city the way it does, say, uh, Manville or how Boundbrook used to, to get hit. But uh, there still are some issues out there. Um, regarding housing, um, I was glad to hear the uh, missing middle housing was brought up as a, as an issue. I want to agree with Mr. Kartika that uh, that is a, an issue uh, in the city. That's a difficult one, not only for New Brunswick, but for, for many, many cities. And um, can you give any insight as to what might be recommended um, for um, improving the situation with missing middle housing? And mostly going to be rental housing as there's not a lot of uh, demand or not a lot of supply being built for uh, uh, owner occupied housing by the uh, by the industry itself. You might be muted there, Ron. You're muted. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I also had turned off my video because I was looking like Max Headroom up there. I was kept breaking up. <laughs> Um, anyway, I, I think the missing middle, I think you can tie that also into the recommendation about rent stabilization. The city already has rent control, but rent stabilization covers a broader aspect. And I think that that address would help address the pressure on the missing middle. Um, so that would be one aspect of it. Um, you know, and I think that, that if I go into if going into too many details without you having the text there, I mean, it's a good question. I would like to note that it's been it has been asked. Um, and once the uh, the text is out there for public review, uh, I think oh, it looks like I disappeared. Um, I, I think that, you know, we can we think that that would be a question that would be right to discuss once you have the, uh, the specifics in front of you. OK, that's uh, that's good. Um, I'm going to wondering... stop my video because it's not worth having me. I keep disappearing. Um, I just want to encourage you, uh, the in the city, to uh, encourage more housing development in the city. So I think that's the uh, really the the only solution uh, to the uh, demand problem is to have the supply. But in doing that supply, it needs to be well designed housing, not just throw up anything but to have a uh, good design standard. That's part of the, what the, the board's there to, to do is to make sure that people uh, do provide a, a good design. Um, one other thing I, I didn't hear in, in the comments, at least I, um, I don't think I heard it, was uh, auxiliary housing. Uh, I know there are some bills uh, in front of the legislature to uh, permit that and so forth, but is uh, it intended to uh, address auxiliary housing in, um, in New Brunswick? One minute. Okay. Um, at the current time, uh, I don't believe auxiliary housing was uh, addressed, but thank you for bringing that in. We'll include it within the comments and, and suggestions that, uh, uh, that that would be included also. That's part of uh, the reason for public comment here. Thank you. And on the uh, transportation element, I um, heard a lot of things about circulation, dealing with the roads and so forth. I didn't really hear anything about uh, pedestrians. Uh, New Brunswick's a very pedestrian-oriented city. 
They're trying to look at the uh, pedestrianization of George Street uh, downtown. There are also many people who just get around, whether it's going to class or uh, going to work by, uh, by walking or taking their bike. And I would hope the uh, circulation element would uh, uh, prioritize uh, people who aren't in cars um, as to how they get around the city. Because That's when you're going fine. to work, you're, you're going to, a lot of people going to their jobs, they're, they're walking. Um, and it's uh, often dangerous or it feels very dangerous out there on the streets. And I hope uh, you come up with some good recommendations as to how to uh, improve that situation. So, so thanks for the time. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Uh, uh, Dan, can uh, uh, Pat just address that because he has, you know. Yeah, go for it. Go for it, Pat. Yeah, Please. thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so, yes, we did pay close attention to um, non-vehicular uh, modes of transit uh, in the city, um, paying attention to things like pedestrians, bicycles, um, the uh, rental scooters that are in the city, too. That was something that we brought up. Um, and basically, you know, providing more helpful solutions of, um, improving the current system that we ha that's in the city um, for pedestrians and cyclists, um, as well as you know further recommendations that you know could expand the existing facilities. Um, looking at bicycles specifically, um, you know, looking at where restriping may need to be uh, implemented in order to you know further separate uh, cyclists and um, cars to make sure that everybody's safe. Um, and then we did look at the uh, George Street closure um, as part of the, uh, I forget the specific name of it, but basically the the restaurant um, help on George Street, making that a pedestrian alley um, after certain times uh, during the week. Um, yes, that was that was part of the element, and there are recommendations that are based on that. Yeah, and and I think that uh, hopefully we really hope that COVID is in our rear view mirror. But let's be realists. Uh, we're still going to have to be dealing with this and other challenges uh, going forward. But I think if you look at uh, things that could come out of it, as you look at a, another set of eyes, and one of it is the last element that Pat talked about, uh, um, the, the efforts to support the uh, the restaurants and such during this uh, pandemic, just, you know, we may look at things a little bit different. And, uh, you know, I think that's part of master planning. Great. Thank you. And thank you for your comments, Mr. Patterson. Uh, Mr. Dominguez, I believe we have one more. That's right. We have one more. Uh, Ms. Linda Stork, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear All me? All right. I can. Let me get my timer up. Ms. Stork, okay. you may begin. Thank you, Mr. Dominguez. Okay. Um, well, I had some comments also about housing. I was pleased to see that the need for the affordable housing as opposed to low income or what's been built are all these really expensive high rises. Um, uh, but because every time that I've asked about something that was going up, you know, what, what was the affordable component? It's either very small or none. So um, that is definitely what we need. And as far as the high percentage of rental property, um, and you made the comment that new owner occupied houses aren't being built but what's happening in my neighborhood is the houses which were all owner occupied when i moved here are all being sold to uh almost all being sold to investors you know somebody somebody llc or or just people who live far away and um you know don't have a personal interest in the property. Has was any consideration given to how to retain the the ownership of the percentage that we have that's owner occupied um, these perfectly good family houses that are being sold out to investors and rented to students? Well, you know, well, you know, I think you identified, and I said before that has been an ongoing issue. Linda, would you? I mean, I can always. Uh, 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 could you tell me what neighborhood you're in? Because I think it's very valuable for our comments. Because I'm going to be include, you know, we'll be including that in the public comments. In, in sure, our, I'm in the sixth ward. I'm you're sorry. in the sixth ward. Uh, the, the 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 my audio is very bad. I didn't mean to talk over you. I'm in the sixth ward, um, across from St. Peter's. Across from St. Peter's, and uh, yeah, that, we have one of okay. those huge vacant properties right at the end of our street. There, that's been. Okay. 
that's been vacant. That huge school has been vacant since before I moved here 29 years ago. Yeah. Um, so that's just a huge vacant. You know, that helps because that puts that puts a place on the comment and we can hear right. it and, come, you know, we can go back and just compare it to the uh, the different plans and see comments on, on what we've had and see whether, you know, it, it, where it's consistent in the past. And as to right, identify, so I it, yeah, so thank you so much. Yeah, so it feeds on itself. You know, if people yeah. would come to look at, at a house here and they see the trash strewn everywhere and, mm -hmm. and um, no, this I mean, is, I gotta say, most of the students are really nice kids, but yeah, you know, yeah, taking this, care of their property is not their thing. Um, uh, this is why I said the 2004 plan and the 2011 re-exam were fine documents, because this is one of them. This is an issue that has been long-term for, for New Brunswick, and it will continue to be, because we have pressures uh, of, you know, people buying it as investors to try to market it to the students. And that housing is, is, is necessary, but it's balancing in the value of having people with skin in the game, people who actually live in the neighborhood who care that trash is, is around, who care about uh, eyes on the street, who care about basically their neighborhood, their their sense of place. So, uh, okay, um, thank you. But m my other question is, when you make the resume recommendations, um, like the first two say, encourage new housing developments of all types, I would say, especially those affordable types mm -hmm. that, are, that are needed. Um, you know, and encouraging redevelopment One with still housing. But then the next two are like, consider um, what, so you, the you, recommendation you know. is that the city should consider it, but but how about just do it? If if that's your recommendation, that it would be good to do. It's a, it's a valid encourage point. It. And, and maybe we just, we'll just have to go back and, and the, the uh, when I say that it has been completed, that means our text, our drafting is done. That doesn't mean that we can't change things based on public comments. That is, and, and, and you know, for citizens like yourself who feel very strongly and have a feeling that there's a there's a lot more Lindas out in your neighborhood, who your your voice is probably the voice of a lot of other people. So I think we could probably change that, and that would be in the strategic implementation plan because what we say is what's being recommended and how, how it can be accomplished. And that's really the last part. A lot of times master plans make recommendations and just say hey, there's, there's nothing there to, uh, uh, you know, where's the beef? Um, we hope that uh, we put some, uh, you know, to put some uh, uh, color to the uh, recommendations in the strategic implementation plan, hopefully it gets done. Okay, I, and I would I like to also reiterate because yeah, because there's no there. I don't. Lin, think Linda, that that was time before. I, I, I don't know if Pardon I spoke me, up loud enough. No, I'm sorry. It, it, it was time. Oh, I didn't yeah. get to my pet subject of the schools. And okay, well, so um, all right. I mean, if it's time, it's time. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you again for the presentation. Uh, thank you to all who made comments. Uh, I think that also made it insightful for people to listen to and uh, we look forward to seeing the report once uh, once completed. Well, we're excited to present it and, and hear further comment. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, section seven, other matters of interest to the public, Mr. Dominguez. Certainly, thank you, uh, Mr. Castaneda. Um, so again, seeing that there aren't too many folks on the call tonight, um, is anyone interested in addressing the board? Uh, please state your name and I'll put you on a list of speakers for up to five minutes. Yeah, Charlie Cradiville, can you yep. hear me? Gotcha, Mr. Cradiville. Again, and start six, if you're on the phone, Linda Stark, all right. If you're on the phone and a little microphone button if you are on the computer. Anyone else? Last call. All right, seeing no extra speakers. Uh, first up is Mr. Charlie Cradiville. Let me get the timer going. And uh, Mr. Cradiville, you may begin. Yes, good evening once again, Charles Cradiville. Um, I, I guess I want to reiterate my 
desire that you hold another public input session before CMA proceeds with uh, their draft. I think that it was clear that there was very limited public input. Um, you know, uh, Ms. Stork had matters that she wasn't able to get to in just five minutes. This meeting was held over the phone with people popping in and out and uh, was not necessarily the, the best, most productive way to, to pull public comment. Nevertheless, I'm glad that, that we had, uh, you know, uh, two great people join me in, in giving comments, but I think we can do better, and I encourage you to, to do that. Is that something that, that you can address tonight if you'll do that? I can uh, tell you, Mr. Credible, that we will take it under consideration. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't know if the, the professionals are still on the call, but I did have some questions that, you know, I didn't, you know, because I was kind of rushing, I didn't get to, to pause and get answers Excuse to them, but I wanted to know, is there another city, audio? maybe Mr. Dominguez knows, is there any other city that has a higher percentage of rental housing, uh, you know, rental, renting residents? Mr. Credible, I don't. Uh, we can. You can certainly contact Mr. Dominguez after the meeting um, it, to see if he has the answer to that question. Okay. And what about the changing the uh, zoning, the changing the parking requirements in the zoning? What did what did they mean by that in the presentation? Can someone address that? I didn't have enough time to to get to elicit that answer in my my short time. I think at this point we'd have to wait for the report in order to really ascertain exactly what they uh, reviewed. Okay, so we're we're not able to get answers to these questions. I, I think that you know this process has not been full or fair, and I hope that you'll uh, you know consider consider trying harder and doing better because uh, you know if if people really knew what was at stake and that this is you know, a plan that's going to be in place for the next 10 years and affect every aspect of uh, New Brunswick life, you know, I think we'd have more more involvement and engagement, but it, it, it's, it's apparent that there hasn't been, a, um, you know, uh, enough work put into to, to fostering that. Um, so I guess the, the only other matter I want to ask about is, are you in compliance with the law yet as far as having a member who's on the Environmental Commission and the Planning Board simultaneously? Or, or, or is the, the board still out of compliance? Chairman Castaneda, may I? I can't hear anybody. Hold on. I, I'm having like some technical issues. I can't hear anybody. Hold on. Mr. Castaneda, if I could, not to be a stickler. Yes. But the, yes. open, the open public session is not really for questions. It's not question time. It's just right. for members of the public to make comments on the subjects that are relevant to the board. It's not really the time for questions to be asked and to be answered. That being said, I will say that my understanding is that membership in the Environmental Commission is not a um, prohibition. It doesn't prevent you from also being on the planning board. Is this Mr. Solomon I'm, I'm hearing from? Yeah, I'm sorry. This is Mr. Solomon. Okay, good to meet you. Uh, I, I think you misunderstood me. Uh, it's my understanding there's a requirement that there be at least one member of the planning board, and perhaps exactly one member of the planning board, that also is an active member of the Environmental Commission. Unfortunately, the board has been sued, and uh, the, one of the board members actually resigned. He, he was the one that was in that joint position. And so for the past several months, the board's been in violation of this statute that requires them to have a dual, a, a member with a dual uh, office. Can you tell me, is that, uh, you know, statute being complied with tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood your comment. Mr. Solomon, can, can you hear me? I, I was trying to fix my, my audio. I can hear you, Mr. Dominguez. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, not to turn this into a Q&A session, but I think that since it's come up, uh, before I'll just I'll just answer, uh, Mr. Kratov. Uh, you're gone, and he's gone. The Environmental Commission, oh. and uh, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Dominguez, you may have to repeat yourself because you 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 uh, you were off for a minute. Oh gosh, I don't know what's happening with that. Okay, um, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. So uh, Mr. Mr. Ferguson has volunteered to uh, 
to be to take that position. So uh, we are awaiting uh, formal uh, designation and appointment for Mr. Uh, Ferguson to the Environmental Commission, but he is, uh, you know, in, in waiting and uh, is the person who will be on both uh, board commissions. Okay, well, sounds like uh, the answer is, no, you're not in compliance tonight, but when the mayor gets around to appointing Matt Ferguson, Matt Ferguson will meet the requirement. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe that the question was answered, Mr. Credible. Okay, well, that's all for tonight. I thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, Ms. Linda Stork. Linda, are you still there? Yes, I am. All right, you may begin. Okay, I'm going to kind of pick up where I um, where I left off. So the it, the lack of affordable middle income housing is not the only reason people are leaving New Brunswick or not moving in. Um, and it, you know, uh, a, a lot of people when they can, if they have school aged children, they leave New Brunswick and move to surrounding towns um and uh you know the situation certainly here in our neighborhood isn't isn't helping this i agree with the concept of having a, a neighborhood school in each neighborhood for each age level up to you know the older the older kids there are advantages to having a you know a centralized location where you can have more variety and all that but um yeah, the school that we lost in our neighborhood, the school that's replacing it is not in the neighborhood. I mean, if you showed somebody a house here and then, you know, showed them that school, yeah, that's not, that's not a match. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's another issue. I th think we should be looking towards planning um, smaller schools in the neighborhoods. Uh, these huge schools are a horrible idea. In fact, I mean, that's a, that's just a gigantic to have 1,105 year olds up to uh, eighth grade, kindergarten to eighth grade. That is an insane number of children. And this relates also to the traffic uh, thing. You know, um, I, I like the comments um, Mr. Patterson made about prioritizing the the pedestrians and the bicycle traffic um, here specifically pedestrians. These are the type of things that make, you know, kind of make a nightmare to put that large of a school at that intersection where it is there. Um, and also like the new parking deck that's going to be a thousand cars. It what's essentially a residential neighborhood. I mean, those school, those streets are you know, we're never built to accommodate um, that type of traffic. A thousand car parking garage, um, uh, you know, way bigger than it needed to be to accommodate the Cancer Institute for whatever reason, but it's going to make a traffic nightmare. Um, it can already take a long time to get across town at rush hour, sitting through lights several times, um, you know, the kind of gridlocks on those intersections. So, yeah, I can't even imagine with a thousand more cars in the mix. And, um, and not, to, not to mention how difficult that makes it for people who are attempting to walk or ride a bike. So, yeah, and, and I also, um, I don't know, this is, I guess, a question, so I don't know. We're not going to answer questions, but the rates, rent stabilization, um, as as opposed or in addition to rent control, I'm not sure exactly what that is. So I was going to ask, but if it would be something that would keep the the people that built these new housing places from being able to to make them not be exempt from rent control for the 30 years or whatever then I think that would be a great idea. One minute. One minute left? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, 
those were really um, the comments I wanted to make. Um, I don't see anything else that I wrote here. But um, also in the future, when people build uh, build housing, um, I, I don't see why they have to be exempt from the rent control laws. So that's, that's not going to help housing to be more affordable. And it also encourages them to like get rid of people so that they can then raise the rent as much as they want for the next piece. Okay. I am done. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Cook. Chairman uh, uh, Castaneda, if yes. I, I just want to, this isn't, again, not not turning this into Q&A, but I do think that it, it bears mentioning for, uh, to clarify something that Ms. Stork just spoke about, the, uh, the exemption uh, on uh, rent control. Uh, so that actually is not our municipal choice. Um, by state law, uh, those, those new construction buildings get that exemption. Um, so we are entirely and wholly preempted on uh, on that factor. So there, there's literally no local law that could be implemented that would prohibit those buildings from their 30-year rent control exemption. I just want to put that out there. Uh, thanks, that, Mr. Dominguez. And that's I will that. take it up with the state. <laughs> there you go. All right. I think that was it in terms of uh, people that signed up. Mr. Dominguez, correct? That is correct. All right, so uh, that being the case, uh, the next uh, part is adjournment. So if I can get a motion to adjourn. I'll move. We're still at all second. Great, thank you everyone, have a great evening. Take care everyone, bye. Night all. Night.